Good morning. Welcome. Uh, this, is a, this is a huge event for all of us. Um, and I just I, I want to welcome you all to, to our, our brand new building and our brand new school. So first, welcome. <laughs> we were here in this very spot just about two years ago. Um, and we had an event here in this very spot two years ago. Um, then, of course, it was a parking lot, and a pretty ugly one. Um, and it was a little warm that day, and we certainly didn't have the benefits of air conditioning. Um, and, but it was, a, it was a wonderful, wonderful event. And this, this board here, the start of something big, was something that, that we produced, that we created as a community that day. And I remember on, on that day, um, which was also a very emotional day, talking about this event as a kind of barn raising. You know, really this was an, an example of a community coming together to, to create something that individually it couldn't do, but collectively it could and do so efficiently. And just like a barn raising, I mean, that happened super fast. Like, this was super fast. This was a parking lot two years ago. It's amazing. Um, so a bunch of folks were here two years ago. And um, in a bunch of folks, actually, that are here today were here a decade ago and more um, and have been critical to making this a reality. There are just too many of those folks in this room for me to try to acknowledge them all, because then I'll just em embarrass myself by not, um, not remembering everyone. Um, but um, the folks from UT System, I've got to say, have been absolutely critical. One we have on stage uh, with Steve Leslie, um, Ray Greenberg, um, Amy Shaw Thomas. Um, fabulous to have um, them working with us. The folks from Seton, I saw Chris Vasquez. I don't know who else is here. There she is. Um, and, and many others. Uh, Seton's been critical from the very beginning. Um, the Live Strong folks, Greg, I know you're way back there, but um, have been uh, wonderful as partners to us. Um, Central Health, um, and represented on stage by, um, by, by Trish, um, but also um, by some of their uh, board members also who are here, and, um, including uh, to, to uh, uh, all around, actually. Um, and then um, also, of course, the city, and I see Mayor uh, Pro Tem uh, Kathy Tovo over here, um, uh, and um, in, in many others. Um, Department of Public Health is represented, um, and of course, we couldn't do it without uh, UT Austin and the leadership there, and uh, the tremendous leadership that, that Greg Finvis, who was provost when I began, and is now our president, uh, brought to this. So, so many of, of the folks have been here for years and years and working on this, and um, you know, just been, I've been very fortunate to be involved just in a little over two years. Um, some folks are new and since those two years ago, and I'm not going to name everybody who's new, but I do want to point out that many of our medical students are here today, and we're thrilled to have you all here. So can you all just raise your hands and... So 50 medical students, um, it's not a big number, but boy, it's, uh, it's big in potential impact. I mean, it is an amazing class. Um, that, you know, normally when a dean gets up here, they reel off the average MCAT scores and GPAs and all that stuff. It's amazing for this group. But what's really amazing is, is, is the stuff that they bring that's, that's not represented in those numbers. Um, so this, the stories, the things that they've overcome, the things that they've achieved already, even at this early stage in their careers, um, the diversity, too, of experiences that they've had, some who've been in professions in nursing and um, uh, in, as an EMT, um, some doing really creative things. I mean, it's really a whole host of amazing stories. I'm not going to review all those, obviously, but they are happy to tell you their stories. So please go up, inter introduce yourselves to them, and, and hear where they came from and what they're about and how they're going to, to make Austin and the rest of the world a better and healthier place. So uh, that also um, is so important to making it real. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm just 
thrilled to, to be here so quickly, um, to have achieved so much in such a short period of time, but hey, this really is just the beginning. It says over there, this is the start of something big, and now this is something big. Well, this is still just the core of something that will be gigantic when we're done. Um, and it's uh, wonderful to take just this moment to, to recognize um, all that, uh, uh, that we've achieved together already in this very short period of time. So, um, so thank you all. Um, I'm gonna hand the uh, podium over now to uh, Greg Fenvis. Um, Greg is the president of uh, UT Austin and my boss. Um, and uh, uh, absolutely fabulous to, uh, to have the pleasure to work with him, um, able to, to steer the ship through um, troubled and uh, smooth waters seamlessly and um, is able to work with us on a, on a really inspiring vision, not just for the med school, but for the entire university. So, so uh, Greg. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Good morning, everybody. When we uh, started thinking about the Dell Medical School, what became the Dell Medical School, and it really started five years ago, and I'll say a little bit more about that. I remember uh, several of you who are, in, who are here today, we were sitting around the room thinking, okay, we're gonna start a medical school. Who are we gonna recruit as a dean for a brand new medical school? Who are we gonna recruit as faculty and, and le acad leaders of academic medicine? Which students are gonna to come to a brand new medical school? These were the questions we were asking five years ago. Well, I think the answer is pretty clear, and let me start with the first one. Uh, we have the best dean of medicine in the United States. <laughs> to come to a university uh, envision what is needed for the future of healthcare, recruit leaders that buy into that vision and will carry it out, to take an empty parking lot and turn it into this beautiful building, uh, but even more importantly, to fill the building with energetic students, uh, with visionaries, with innovators, to create a culture of change uh, for the future of healthcare is an incredible accomplishment in an amazingly short period of time. So we all owe Dean Clay Johnson a great, uh, great deal of thanks. Now, give him a thanks. Now, the history of the University of Texas uh, has been written for over 133 years. And you go back to the Texas Constitution of 1876. The founders of this state were brilliant. In the Constitution, they call for a founding of the University of the First Class. And we have become a University of the First Class, and we aspire to, to be even a better university. But in 1876, when that Constitution was written, Austin was a dusty little town on the Colorado River. And the founders of the state recognized that, yes, we needed a medical school, the state needed a medical school, but it couldn't be in Austin. It was a dusty little outpost on the Colorado River. So they formed a medical branch of the University of Texas, which of course is now UTMB in Galveston, an outstanding school of medicine. And as the state has become the second largest state in the country and the fastest growing state, we have outstanding medical schools throughout the state, and all of them in the UT system. Uh, I'm pointing to, uh, uh, Ray Greenberg. But Austin is the largest city in the United States without a medical school, and that was part of the vision to bring back medicine to the University of Texas and bring medicine now to this incredible, dynamic, metropolitan area in, in Central Texas, and that's what we are doing. So uh, Clay talked about a landmark two years ago. Well, uh, a year ago, uh, we put, signed, uh, Dean Johnston, uh, Senator Kirk Watson, who I'll introduce in a moment, and I signed the last beam uh, that was installed at the top of this building. And as I watched uh, the construction from my office, uh, seeing the physical manifestation of the Dell Medical School take place, uh, seeing the people recruited here, it's really been one of the most amazing experiences of my life and my professional career, and it's a real honor to be here. 
So now we're welcoming the first class of students, and uh, they look so young. Um, but they, as Clay said, they are an incredibly accomplished group of uh, future young physicians uh, who could have gone to almost any medical school in the country. And they bought into the vision and the potential, and this will be a very unique class. We only have one first class of Dell Medical students, and we are so proud and gratified that you all, the 50 students uh, that are here uh, starting, uh, starting soon, uh, have chosen Dell Medical School to, for your medical education, but even more importantly, uh, to begin an era of change and innovation in healthcare starting right here in Austin, Texas. Let's give them a round of applause. Now, there are a lot of people that are here today who have contributed um, tremendously uh, to getting us here today, but there is one person uh, who deserves more credit, more acclaim, and more recognition and thanks uh, than anybody else in this room, uh, in my opinion. Uh, five years ago, uh, our senator from Central Texas, Senate District 14, Senator Kirk Watson, had a vision for what was possible in this dynamic community, what was possible for the people of Central Texas, the people of Travis County, uh, working with our partners, uh, Central Health, who you'll uh, hear from Trish Young Brown, uh, from Seton Family of Healthcare, tremendous healthcare system. And what he laid out a vision uh, five years ago uh, to accomplish 10 goals to utterly transform healthcare in Austin and Travis County. Well, we're halfway through that 10-year period, and I'm sure the senator is looking with pride, probably not too much amazement because he knew it was going to happen, uh, with what we have accomplished and what we will accomplish in the next five years to fulfill his goal. So I am so honored to call Senator Watson my friend. Uh, the University of Texas is very fortunate to have Senator Watson uh, representing our district, and the people of Travis County and Bastrop County are so fortunate to have Senator Watson representing them in the state capitol just a few blocks to the south. So please welcome our senator, Senator Kirk Watson. Well, thank you very much, President Finviz. Many of you have heard me say it before, but I say it today, this truly is a great day to be in Austin, Texas. Yep. It's an historical day. It's a defining point in our history. What we celebrate today, the inaugural class of our community's medical school, assures us that our future will be different and special. As we stand here on the grounds of the University of Texas, I look at President Finviz, Vice Chancellor Leslie, I think of Bill Powers, and Ken Shine, Amy Shaw Thomas, Francisco Cigarroa, certain regents, Sue Cox, and I thank them and you all for the roles that you've played in allowing us to be here today. Yes. And I thank Dean Johnston. I agree with what President Finvis said. We have the best Dean of Medicine in the country. I believe he is the right leader for us as we move into this exciting future. And that has been confirmed for me as I've watched him build out, as the President referred to, this incredible team that's going to be working in this medical school and teaching here. I thank Trish and I thank the entire board of Central Health, uh, the, the, uh, the board that voted to put this initiative on a ballot, that board took a leap of leadership back in 2012. And that board and the current board and the future boards that we're going to be working with at Central Health, they all joined that, that board that took that leap of leadership in a commitment to the people that have brought us to this point today. And it's going to require continued willingness to be smart, think outside the box, 
use a different playbook and not fear experimentation and have the discipline to not retreat from a revolution in healthcare when it's not simple or simplistic or the way it's always been done or when others, maybe critics, don't see the potential in the change. It's been mentioned, Seton is a great partner in all this, and Jesus Garza and Greg Hartman are, have been wonderful in helping us get to this. And of course, the voters of Travis County are remarkable. I deeply appreciate the voters allowing me to serve and to be a part of this sort of event and being people that were willing to pay attention to this. I'd be remiss if I didn't say on a historic day like this, thank you to my staff and others that I see in the room that have helped get us to this point. You know, I mentioned the voters of Travis County. Our people are thoughtful and optimistic about their needs, goals, and desires, including the needs, goals, and desires of their neighbors, some of which may not have as much as they do. They are empathetic and they've been bold. Congratulations to the new students. You are, each and all of you, the personification of those people's needs, goals, and desires. The personification of those needs, goals, and desires coming true. You are the animators of their dreams and their hopes. You hold historic positions in this new school by being the first. But we're counting on you to make history by a commitment to defining a new and fully realized future. So, no pressure at all. <laughs> Seriously, wrap yourself, wrap yourself in this honor and this responsibility. It is so stinking unique. <laughs> Soak it in. Carry it from now, from this moment in time, until the very end of your careers. Make it a part of you and your life experience. It's that big a deal. You know, it's pointed out that less than five years ago, I spoke of my belief that Austin was capable of doing something big and different. I called for us to achieve 10 goals in 10 years by reaching further than we had ever reached before, by being smarter and by being willing to risk more so that what we could do is obtain a new, modern, yeah, let's say it, even revolutionary approach to health care for everyone. Key to that was to that call and that challenge was a medical school at a wonderful tier one research university, a modern 21st century teaching and safety net hospital, and uniquely Austin clinics, among a few other important things. Lots has been said and lots will be said about this medical school and what it will do in terms of rethinking everything. Well, today we know it started and it's moving fast. I am so proud. 25 years from now, people will look back on this effort, this medical school, and say it was as big for Austin as the damming of the river was. It will provide the flow of thought, the stream of ideas and innovation that serves our people, including our most vulnerable, pushes our economy, and positively redefines Austin, Texas. So I say thank you to all that have been involved in this. And God bless the future that we're rethinking and we're recreating. It's now my distinct pleasure to introduce someone that was thinking about this a long time. When he was serving in different roles at the University of Texas, but not the least of which was provost, he was doing things all over this campus that would set us up so that when we finally were able to make that leap and get a medical school, we would truly be ready. He's now the ex Executive Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs for the University of Texas System, a very dear friend uh, and a real visionary leader, Dr. Steve Leslie.
Well, thank you, Senator Watson. Uh, what, a, what a proud day. So uh, I'm going to look this direction. I'm going to talk to our students. I know the rest of you are here, and, and thank you so much, but there they are. So, uh, so let, me just, let me just say to our inaugural Dell Medical School class, congratulations. Well, I, I know you know what this means and what a privilege it is for you to be here. And you know that there are thousands of other young men and women who would love to be sitting in your seats as you start this. So uh, you, you've done powerful work and preparation to get here. And just congratulations. You know, for me, uh, you know, I, I, as I have more gray hair than, than most of you, the, um, than, than all of you, the, the, the reality is what I would like to do is, is, is to tell you all of it, just to spend a lot of time talking about the history behind what brought us here. Uh, and, and I want to hear your story. Uh, so, so if we talk individually, I want to hear what you say, but you're going to have to listen to what I say too, because this has been a long, long time in preparing for this. Uh, the, the thing that I feel right now is, is, is two words, uh, pride in, in terms of getting this medical school launched in the way that it's being launched, and thank, thankfulness and, and gratitude for, for where we are, because I know what it means for all of you, and then what you're going to do as you build out your lives and, and, and your careers. Uh, there was a really good article in yesterday's newspaper. Ralph Horowitz wrote it. I know Ralph's here. I talked to Ralph a little while ago. There he is back there. Uh, but I want to expand on some of the things that Ralph put in his, in his article. There is a deep history that goes back a long, long time. As a matter of fact, it really started, as, as Ralph said in his article yesterday, back in the early 2000s. So there's been foundational work going on to build out this medical school uh, that, that goes back perhaps half of most of your lives. And so I think that's an important to think about. That, and it wasn't because we were dragging our feet in terms of preparedness and, and working on this. It was because we understood that at a place like the University of Texas at Austin, we don't push the go button until we're ready. And what that means is that we're ready to make sure that the medical school is of the caliber and the excellence that you expect of a world-class university like the University of Texas at Austin, and it is. Uh, President Fenves said it, it starts with the dean, and, and boy, did we recruit the world-class dean. And I have the privilege of signing uh, the final kind of approvals for all of his appointments, and I smile every time because I see the caliber of excellence that he's bringing in to this great university. But it starts a long time ago, and it starts with your clinical partner, Seton. As you go into your work in the clinical environment with this powerful uh, health care entity, the Seton family of hospital systems. Know that back in the early 2000s, Seton, along with UT System, was providing a powerful underpinning for the launch of what would become the Dell Medical School. They put millions, many, many millions of dollars into the foundations to uh, prepare for this uh, back into the early 2000s. Seton began in partnership with, uh, at the time, Galveston uh, Medical Branch what formed the foundations for building out the residency programs in the third and fourth year medical education in partnership with, with, uh, with a medical branch. And then it became Southwestern, and that's where we got Sue Cox, who, who, who created the foundations for all of that, and she's really been powerful with the Dell Medical School. Uh, so Seton has been at the, at, the, uh, at the center, at the source of the launching of this medical school for many, many years, and not just as a committed leader, but, but the financial base has been provided significantly by Seton. So know that when you go in, that Seton is much more than a powerful clinical partner. It is, without Seton, we wouldn't be here. We just would not. Secondly, central health. And you'll hear from Trish Young-Brown uh, right after I give my remarks, but, uh, but the same thing, Trish. Without your leadership and without the central health leadership understanding the vision of what it means to go into this new era of health care, well, we would not be where we are right now. So we owe a lot to, to central health and to Trish Young-Brown's leadership. Uh, and our senator, oh my, you know, it, it really is a case that in 2011, when this launched, uh, so you've heard all the things. I don't need to go into length with this. We all know what Senator Kirk Watson has done for the launching of this medical school. We would not be where we are right now if it were not for the leadership of Senator Kirk Watson. If there was a definition of servant leadership, it should have a picture of Senator Watson right, right beside it. 
So he's a powerful leader. Thank you so much. And we're not done with you yet. We have lots more uh, for you. So. <laughs> UT Austin, you know, I was, uh, of course, involved in this for many, many years. And the power of having UT Austin being patient, persistent, purposeful in the care and building the strong foundations needs to be understood over many, many years and not starting until we were ready to start. And it's not just the central administration over all those years, but it's the faculty and it's the campus leadership who understood the power of bringing all this together for the benefit of the medical school and the academic campus and for Central Texas and for Texas and the national leadership that that involves. So UT Austin. Of course, the citizens, uh, the taxpayers of Central Texas, uh, uh, we just wouldn't be here if it weren't for that final decision back in November of 2012. So, uh, so powerful thanks to everyone who's paying taxes every day to support this great medical school. And let me final, uh, say finally to the University of Texas system uh, that it was at the foundation of all this back from the very beginning in the early 2000s of uh, paving the pathway. Uh, and, and so many who were here uh, who are part of the past uh, and are all smiling because they paved the way for the future. So, uh, well, I could just go on and on, but let me, let me stop. I've probably gone too long already. But let me say in closing, uh, what I would like to ask you to do is to go over to the South Mall and stand in front of the steps of the main building, the tower. And look at those two plaques that are on the pillars that are in front of the steps that lead up to the south entrance of the main building. And what you will read is something that I think should be a core message to you as you go through your education to set the stage for your life. And that is uh, the, the definition of what this university stands for and defines its core purpose. And that core purpose is to transform lives for the benefit of society. And that's what we've done over these years, is to prepare the pathway so that as we engage this Dell Medical School, it will be transformative for you in your own individual ways. But the expectation is higher than that. And that is for you to understand that as you go forward, you take up the message and that you charge, particularly with the importance of who you are and what your circumstances are, and the fact that it all is starting with you, that you will take this up and you'll make your life's commitment to transforming the lives of others for the benefit of society. And I know you will do that. So I'll just leave by saying that, that uh, uh, you know, I remember when I left Purdue and I was finishing my degree years ago as I was coming to Texas to start my faculty position here, and an old professor looked at me and he said, what you've done has really prepared you to be in an opportunity that you're going to have when you go to Texas. But your life will be defined by what you will do going forward. And I've tried never to forget that. Set your sights high. Understand that as the inaugural class of the Dell Medical School, it's more about being a doctor. It is that. That's great. But it is a powerful message that you're entering into an era where best practices will be developed and it will be your expectation individually uh, to set your path for the future, to have transformative ideas and build out best practices to serve society. So let me just end by saying we're very, very, very proud of you and congratulations. <laughs> so, So let me introduce Trish Young-Brown. Trish uh, had the good fortune of going back many, many years, CEO of, of Central Health. And as I said earlier in my remarks, we just would not be where we are today without the leadership of uh, Trish. And Trish, thank you so much. We look forward to continuing to work with you. you. Good morning, everyone. It is an amazing day to be able to witness the power of collaboration and cooperation in this community. I have experienced it firsthand for the last 11 years, maybe going on 12 now since the district was created. And it's, um, it's so, I'm grateful to be able to come in this sequence of, of speaking with all these illustrious people who have talked before me because it just demonstrates and allows me to focus on the greatness that is partnership, the greatness that is collaboration for the improvement of our community. I think most of you know that in 2012, Central Health made a promise to the Travis County residents to transform care 
in our community through the creation of this new medical school, supported by a public investment from Central Health. It's been mentioned that the voters shared our vision. They agreed to invest in this future that we all knew was attainable, obtainable. I think most of you also know that the Central Health is the local health care district that's creating and improving care and access for low-income and uninsured res residents of, this, of Travis County. These are our neighbors. These are the people that we live with day to day who have difficulty accessing health care because of the nature of health care and what the Dell Medical School here is going to do, proving that it can be different. Today, is, it's a momentous occasion to be able to see the lights come on in this building, to look across the room and see the faces of the future, who is going to care for our residents, who's going to care for our neighbors. And I know that the passion that you bring to that will be demonstrated, as I've seen it being demonstrated already through Dean Johnston, through the brilliant faculty and, and the brilliant leaders he's, bring, he's brought into the organization. And we've had the benefit of working as this medical school's been developed and had an opportunity to give input and demonstrate, share with them on an ongoing basis what the needs of our community is. I think you all remember that um, the Dell Medical School supported in large part by a $35 million annual payment from Central Health through the Community Care Collaborative, which is a local nonprofit partnership founded by Central Health and the Seton Healthcare family. Again, referencing how the, the value of these three parties maximize what is possible for this community. We use the community, collab community care collaborative with a mixture of public and private funds to improve and integrate our healthcare system. And it's a system that has historically been fragmented. It's been very hard to navigate and that many of those who need it most often cannot access it in the way that they need to. That's what we're going to change. That's what we're changing today. We welcome the new medical students today. We know you're going to help us in that transformation. You're going to help us figure out the best way to care for our neighbors. We know that we have to ask, what are the problems in our community? This is not an academic exercise that we're going through. This is real world problem solving day to day. What are we facing here? And how can the Dell Medical School help us solve those problems? And as was mentioned earlier, I expect that those solutions then bring solutions for other communities and other parts of the world. We know that the Dell Medical School residents, the students, and the faculty will be directly involved in helping Central Health and our partners deliver healthcare services to those that we serve. In fact, our affiliation agreement requires that the students and the residents and the faculty be part of the care delivery to those that we serve. And we know that those opportunities for clinical training, they're occurring today in the, in the healthcare delivery system that exists. Our partners, such as Community Care, where the residents and the faculty are treating patients today, they'll be doing more of that in the future. We know there's a new model of education that will have medical students entering the clinical setting much earlier than they had before. Our health centers throughout our safety net system will be the training ground for them. Also, I think it's important to mention, we are focused on a very vulnerable part of our community that has difficulty accessing care. But we know overall this medical school is designed also to address a shortage for our community as a whole. We all experience every day as we get on these roads the growth that's occurring in Austin. We know it's not abating at the least. And we know that there are physician shortages in certain areas. This medical school will help close those gaps. So those are, those are important improvements not only for our vulnerable residents but also for the entirety of the community. Through the Senator's 10 and 10 plan, he has put forth filling the gaps, providing those things that we don't have as a world-class world community. We need to have the world-class health care that goes with it. We are focused most acutely now in terms of our health care delivery system on not only increasing the types of health care available and the quantity of health care availability, but how we do it and how it serves the patient better, how we innovate in a way that takes an old system that created barriers to care and creates new methods for improving the quality and the quickness of access to care. The Dell Medical School, 
even before its first class of students has begun, has already begun working with us to redesign healthcare and making us make advances in certain areas of specialty shortages, such as orthopedics, helping us to improve women's health care already today by redesigning how the assets that we have, the resources, the doctors, the nurses, the staff that we have today, how they can be utilized to better provide a common standard of care for everyone in this community. That's progress, and that's before the school has opened. So I know that the promise of the Dell Medical School will be realized because I'm seeing it in action today. So on behalf of Central Health, of all of our partners in the safety net who you'll be working with, we welcome you today. We're so excited to have you. We want to be your partner. We hope, um, I, get, I get to mention that we actually had two of the new students working in our system, um, the Community Care Collaborative and Central Health, learn a little bit more about us. That is a wonderful, um, well, let's say call it a stomping ground potentially. We hope you'll come back. <laughs> we hope you'll stay with us. We hope we're creating an environment where you can live your passion and you will want to stay with us and care for the communities that we care for and we feel so passionately about. So welcome and we love, uh, we love that you're here. We love that you share our passion and we're here to support you along the way. Thank you. And I get to introduce Dr. Aisha White, who I think just is a perfect example of the physician of the future. Dr. White is a community health physician with Seton Healthcare Family. She's gonna come up and say a few words. And um, I hope that, come on up. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. She has, it's just one of the, I can't even, it's hard to find the right words. When you get to work with people like Dr. White, who you see shares your passion, shares your love of medicine, but doing it in the right way that serves the community, I get to come to work every day, and this is what I get to do. So think what you get to do in the future. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. So uh, good morning, everybody. I echo all of the sentiments that have been said earlier about what an exciting day this is. Um, I, like many other doctors in the community, am very excited about the Dell Medical School and the new life and energy that it will bring to the medical community and the community at large. Um, the healthcare system is ripe for change and I believe that the Dell Medical School has all of the resources uh, to equip its students with everything that they need to help make this system better. Um, with its focus not only on medical education, but as many other people on the stage have mentioned, on leadership, uh, community engagement, and innovation, uh, Dell Medical School will undoubtedly groom physician leaders who will change healthcare as we know it. Um, the students will have an academic experience that is like no other. So, you know, this is something that particularly hits home to me. Um, I've been involved in some of the curriculum planning committees, and. I mean, this is an amazing curriculum, so I, I wanna take a few minutes to talk about that. Um, so there's a leadership component to the curriculum that spans throughout the four years. Um, there's also an interprofessional education block that brings together the medical students with social work, nursing, pharmacy, and nutrition students to collaborate on problem solving and case management. Um, there's a community and preventive medicine component. Um, the students will also have the opportunity to work with other agencies around town who provide uh, resources and health care to the safety net population, which Trish has spoken about. Um, and there's also, of course, an innovation, leadership, and discovery block and opportunities for dual degrees. Uh, this is an opportunity that's like no place else. Um, so this is an amazing opportunity for these bright students and for our community. Uh, with this, Dell Medical School and its students will be a central force in the community for promoting innovation, collaboration, better health, and increased access to health care, and hopefully also improvement in outcomes. Welcome. I will now introduce again Dean Johnston. Great, well, um, now it's time to party. 
Um, and to, to prepare you for that, um, I just I, I want to set the stage a little bit. So first of all, the, um, we really do have a fabulous um, faculty and staff. So could the faculty and staff at Dell Med School just raise your hands? So you all please meet them, talk to them. It's really an amazing group. You also, um, you, you already know where most of our students are. They are also are scattered throughout the room. Um, uh, please introduce yourselves to the students um, um, and, and meet them as well uh, during this time. We also have a number of donors here. I'm not going to try to introduce them all, and I won't embarrass them by having them raise their hands, but we wouldn't be here without the, um, the great generosity of many, many people in this community. It started with Michael and Susan Dell and their tremendous gift, but it has um, been redoubled, re-tripled, re-quadrupled. Re um, you know, Liz Strong gift was another big one. Um, and those uh, gifts continue, and, um, and that is critical to our success, and many of them are here, and, and, and we want to thank them and introduce yourselves and um, have them join the party. Um, so, yeah. And then I understand that Representative Celia Israel is also here, who just came in, so I just want to say hi to her if you're in the back. With the horns underneath, so introduce yourself. Um, and then I want to just say really quickly some, a couple things about this building. Um, it's, an, it's an amazing building. I mean, the, how it came to be is also amazing. You know, the vote from the, from the raise your property tax, and this is a part of that. Um, when we, uh, one of the construction workers, um, and this was not from leadership, one of the construction workers said, hey, you know, we're about to put that last beam in place. Um, maybe you guys ought to do something special about it. And we're like, oh, wow, you know, what an interesting idea. So as was mentioned already, we signed it. Uh, Greg and, and uh, Kirk and I signed it. But that was, we were the 301st, second, and third signatures on that beam. Well, what the group decided to do is to offer to the community, hey, look, we got this beam. Come, you're a part of this. You made this happen. Come and sign it. And it was amazing that, that you know, a school teacher brought her class in to sign it. Um, moms would drive by and have their children sign on the, be, oh, I can't talk about it, it makes me, it makes me so sad, but it's just like, um, it's just amazing show of, of how invested, you know, the construction workers were and this community was in the building of this. So I think we can see that beam, right? I haven't seen it yet, but it's up here in the corner, right on the top floor. Is that correct? Jim, is that right? Yeah. I think so. So look for that, because that's the last thing I'm going to say. It is. It's up. It's, that, it's up there, top of that staircase. Um, so that's the, so this building is beautifully designed around our mission. So one way you'll see that is in, we don't have a lecture hall in here because we don't really believe in lectures. It sounds weird, but we don't believe in lectures. We believe in group problem solving. And so the room over here you'll see is specifically designed for the, the way we teach. There's no other medical school that has a room like ours designed specifically around the way we teach. That's one example. The other is just the way it's built. Completely glass, so, you know, yes, it is transparent. Transparency open to the community, that is definitely a key theme that's embraced in this building. The staircase, which unfortunately we can't use today, um, but we will be able to very, very soon, right? <laughs> um, is um, also, you know, the, uh, you, you can look, it, eventually we'll have art throughout the building and at the top there'll be a wonderful piece of sculpture and just the sort of rising up and the communications within the building also really re reflect um, that theme. So part of the party is to do the tour. Larry Speck, the guy who architected this building, was a dean of architecture here before and then quit to do real work, not as a dean, but to get some stuff done. Um, uh, design this building. He's here. He's going to lead that tour. That's, that'll be up on the fifth floor. And as you might have noticed, there, there's some media here too. Um, and we're happy to have them. And rather than taking um, any questions from the podium, because we've already gone for a long time, we're, we'll all be available and everyone else is here and are very, very happy to talk to you all. And we appreciate you all being here for this really wonderful uh, event. So thank you all. Please have a great time. Celebrate this momentous day.